Any second that to that motion? I so second the motion. Thank you. Honorable members, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Those against, say nay. The ayes have it. Record of votes and proceedings for Friday, 18th August 
Very well, let's return to the votes and proceedings. Page 5, any amendments? Page 6. Page 7. Thank you. Can somebody please go? So moved, Mr. Speaker. Any second? I so second, Mr. Speaker. I hope this time you've been able to identify both the Mufa and the second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Those against, say nay. The ayes have it. Record of votes and proceedings for Friday, 18th August 2020 has been adopted. Announcement by Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, <coughs> I'm trying to clear my voice. Congratulations to both of you. 
il est bien. Ou bien. Now let me come back to the third issue of the honorable members for whom my arms are still widely stretched to welcome. I'll welcome them heartily whenever they come. And please convey this as the leader of the opposition. But let them remember that the invitation I have extended to them to come and take their seats is not open-ended. This is a house of laws. We make the laws of this land. And make no mistake, we must be the first to respect the laws of the land for other people to follow. And when you respect the law, it means respect for the law, the sanctity of the law. That's what it means. Nothing more, nothing less. This sitting today, since we started, will be the 23rd city of this six months. I repeat, the 23rd city of this party. What this means is that we have only seven more days to go. Seven cities. Now to go to the date of closure. So I'm ready to welcome the absent members of parliament provided when they come, their coming will be consistent with the provisions of the law. If they are coming, takes place outside of the ambit of the law, then I'm afraid they will have only themselves to blame. Not Mr. Speaker, not the clerk, not any other member of parliament. This is the third time I'm urging them to come and take their seats. Thank you. The third and final one, says the acting leader of the opposition. Well, you know, even, let me use the analogy of the child and baby. If the parent wants the child once, hmm? and he does it a second time, and he's forced to do it a third time, I'm sure we all know, bearing in mind our cultural practices, what the consequences. So five, they will say, what you, you don't pass back. So 
For the third time, I'm urging the absentee members to please consider. Let's go to that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Senu. People are okay with the SOS, eh? Yes, yes, that one. Thank you. I, I, I see consultations right in the well. Right in the well by very senior. So, on your behalf, members of parliament, and on behalf of my humble office as speaker, I charge you, acting leader of the opposition, to kindly convey my message to your colleagues. I'm yearning to see them take their seats. It will be a great pleasure for me and the rest of the house to see them take their seats. But time is running out. And we're running against time. I've analyzed very clearly to tell you how many cities we have made and how many remain. And you know to say, Mr. Speaker, please compromise. Please be lenient. Let me again remind the Honorable House that this is no ordinary law. This law about absenteeism is contained in Section 70. Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven E. Should be read in conjunction with the standing orders.
They will not answer that question. Lane of paper. Honorable Patrick S. Newman, Majority Leader of the Government Business.
in the seventh report of the committee on appointment and public service on parliamentary vetting for presidential nomination. Introduction. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the Committee on Appointment and Public Service, in tandem with its constitutional obligation, met on Tuesday, 10th October 2020, and interviewed seven presidential nominees for the following positions. One, the, exec the Chief Executive Officer. And hold on, please. May I have. This is your leader. Your leader speaking. And I hear noises from the government side of the house. No disrespect can be greater. Proceed, please.
Mrs. Musa Hiro Bari. background in company management, business development, and cross-cultural expertise for conducting both local and international transactions. She is capable of managing supply chain disruptions and building relationships with relevant stakeholders. Prior to this appointment, she served as country director, Westminster Sierra Leone, an international security outfit of the Luge International Airport that has given much security credibility to the airport by assessment of the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. The nominee holds a, a bachelor degree in philosophy in psychology from Buna University in the United Kingdom, a master's degree in business administration, MBD, from the University of Leicester, United Kingdom, and a diploma from the Chartered Management Institute in strategic management and leadership. In her response to the committee on what she would deliver at the Civil Aviation Authority, Mrs. Barry acknowledged that the aviation industry was a constantly changing world with emerging legal ramifications daily, but that was going with an open mindset to learn and work with the already established team to realize the expectations of the government. Second nominee, Mr. Fudi. Janga Kone, Purport Executive of the National Security Commission, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Fode Janga Kone is a renowned accountant and procurement specialist with vast experience in management and policy relating to procurement and supply chain management at local and ministerial levels. He holds a master's degree from Robert Kennedy College, Manchester, United Kingdom, in procurement, logistics, and supply chain management, and a Pretoria of international accreditations at various planning institutions worldwide on procurement-related courses and trainings. Mr. Kone has worked with many government and development partners, with credible reports. From 2014 to date, he has been the managing, managing the procurement care of the central government and local councils in assessing value for money in all procurement dealings. In his response to the committee, he said he was happy to have the opportunity to work as a regulatory body and emphasize that the positive building for staff across all sectors was very key for both manual and automotive, and automotive procurement solutions. On the issues of the procurement directorate, in the Ministry of Finance, the nominee said it was a civil service. Professor Podesa is a fine soldier, a renowned professor, and a public health specialist with a pictorial of proven scientific research records, globally exhibiting astute competencies and exceptional management skills. He is currently, he is current, currently, he is currently serving as head of the department of microbiology, College of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences. Allied Health Sciences, University of Sierra Leone, and principal of the University of Sierra Leone. In, he has 149 research publications to his credit, and most of which is four authors. Mr. He has 149 research publications to his credit, and most of which he co authored with Professor Ea Pakima, the proposed chairman of the board of directors, the National Public Health Agency. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Member, the nominee of Stanley Research attracted world attention at the height of the Ebola pandemic in Sierra Leone, when he used the infected blood of Ebola survivors on Ebola patients 
who we are in critical conditions, and we are later labeled to be public. <laughs> Responding to the committee on what he will be bringing to the NPHA, he said he was quite aware of the health sector and promised to work with the board and health professionals to realize the dream of the Public Health Act. Four, Professor Ia Albert Bakima, the first chairman, board of directors, National Public Health Administration, Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, Professor Ia Albert Bakima is a seasoned lecturer and a scientific researcher and with vast experience in molecular microbiology and immunology from decades and in and out of the country. As an outstanding doctoral researcher, Professor Akima has involved in many WHO researches and training in seminars globally in the field of disease control, prevention, and other interventions. Professor Bakima also served as focal person and consultant in key health institutions such as USA, Global Fund, HIV, AIDS, West African Health Organization to address disease conditions of malaria, tuberculosis, etc., etc., and environmental health assistance. Apart from many volunteer and consultants, services, the nominee served as a country director, USA and provided training and supervisory role in making sure that staff safety and health conditions were maintained. He later served as Minister of Technical and Higher Education, Ministry from 2018 to 2021, to support, this, to support and strengthen and strengthen the technical and vocational sector, make that correction please, and vocational sector in the middle educational system to, to achieve human capital development and resourcefulness. Professor Pakima is, a, is still recognized as a key cornerstone in the country's educational transformation system and health intervention drive. From the appointment in the health agency, it's like bringing the professor home. He has done, he has done extensive research with his former student and now co-researcher, the current proposed executive director for, his, for the same agency in question. Brigadier, General, Professor, Sir, Professor Fori Sir, responding to this committee inquiry on his contributions to the NPHA, the landed professor said, quoting him, I will work with all professionals to build a strong public health structure. Five, Dr. Joseph Aspara. Proposed chairman. Monument and Health Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ahmed Atatza Bansari is a barrister, a law and a communication expert with in depth knowledge on policy formulation and implementation on youth programs and plans for integration into national development agenda. Prior to this appointment, he served as field manager, Minister of Youth Affairs. We are his key responsibilities. We have to plan field visits and projects and projects and expedite monitoring activities of all projects. The articulate lawyer promised to lead to the expectation of His Excellency in, in job creation and promised to challenge and rehabilitate youth engaged, youth engaged in drugs abuses, wage war on drug dealers, and reduce increase in illegal youth migration to foreign countries. <coughs> Take you to the correction, it's not 10, it's 7 now. <laughs> Dr. Abubakar S. Masakoy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, Dr. Masakoy is a seasoned consultant and education and educationalist with admirable experience in environment and development as well as climate change phenomenon, both local and global. Prior to his assignment, 
he was a consultant, policy and institutional analyst for Coast Azul Management of Wetlands International Africa. He has a profile of academic degrees and research papers to his credit. Dr. Masakoy promised to strengthen the upward trajectory of the MBAs to progress on climate change and environment protection and as espoused in the environment policies of the other policies of this country. Recommendation. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, the committee adjourned the following nominees, the president's nominees, to be adequately qualified to their proposed appointment and are therefore recommended to the House for approval. One, Fudi Janga Kone, proposed chief executive officer, national public procurement agent, a authority, MPAE 2. Musa Biro Bari, proposed director general, Surrey Civil Aviation Authority. Three, Professor Furesa, proposed executive director, National Public Health Agency. Five, Joseph Kaifala, proposed chairman, Monument and Redis Commission. Five, Professor Ian Bakima, proposed chairman, board of directors, National Public Health Agency. Six, Mr. Ahmed Atata, proposed commissioner, National Youth Commission. Dr. Abu Bakar Masako, proposed executive chairman, Environment Protection. The seventh report reflects the unanimous view of the committee. I therefore move that the seventh report of the, of, the fifth, of the first session of the committee on appointment and the public service be adopted by the House and the recommendations contained in the approval. First, we submit a read that the chairman of the committee, of Bukaka Jama, Bunabayama, Honorable Matthew Saluma, give you. Thank you for your
So many of the people who voted for the excellent and those that did not vote for him to achieve his agenda. So you are expected to perform and not to disappoint his excellency, the president. If you disappoint his excellency, the president, you will not just be disappointing him, you will be disappointing this parliament and by extension, the people of Sierra Leone. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I'm pleased when I see young people presented to this parliament for a program. It shows some of us who came in very early have been able to stand the test of time and we have encouraged the leadership of this nation to believe that young people can perform. And ever since we took over governance, we can boast who we say. The executive arm of government is 60 percent or more of your people. Thank you, His Excellency, the President, for believing in your people. Because no president before now, and I stand to challenge those that will become to the bold and brave north to bring young people in the fold of leadership. The young people selected will be selected to represent us. They are the guinea pigs. If you succeed, you are succeeding for young people of Sierra Leone. If you fail, you are failing the young people of Sierra Leone. Please do us proud. Please deliver. Because the young people who have been left behind, His Excellency is moving, to, is moving us. Because before now, we used to be the future leaders. But today, the future is here. We are the leaders. So please, the fact that His Excellency has bestowed his confidence in you, to make sure you deliver. Mr. Speaker, when apprentices come here, we hit presents on them. Some of them perform, some of them fail. But at the end of the day, we remain as a parliament. We are the greatest losers. A few years down the line, we'll be presenting ourselves to the people of Sierra Leone for voting. But these appointees, they will not be presenting themselves. But we, members of parliament, will be answering questions of their performance. Today, on our side, we have 30 or more MPs that did not come back because they were not able to answer questions that we have put to bed during the election. So if you fail, who will be the losers? Who will have to face the people? They will have to ask us questions. And some of the questions we don't have answers for. But I want to assure you that this is a new parliament. I have said and I want to challenge this parliament that going forward, we should, we should make sure we perform our oversight function without fear or favor. Mr. Speaker, when these appointees are nominated, you see them coming around Parliament. It behaves as if when they go to these offices, when you call on them, they will respond with the speed it deserves. But sometimes, Mr. Speaker, it is hard for you to see members of Parliament calling on appointees. They don't even give their call. They don't. They keep them in their waiting room. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. They keep them. We have five junior members of the We have five junior in terms of governance. When members of parliament visit your office, they are not visiting you today. They are visiting you to talk for their constituents. They are bringing issues of their constituencies. Yes. If you don't listen to them, you don't listen to their cries, that means you are not listening to the people of Sierra this is the only, we are the only person that the people know. They know our phone numbers, they know our addresses, they know our offices. Some of you, speak our honorable members, are constituent in the So, Mr. Speaker, one member of the parliament is Please open your doors. Please pick your calls. Please treat them with the utmost respect in the South. And to committee members and committee chairmen, please, we have said in this parliament, committees are now going to be given as per performance. 
That's why the Constitution is very clear. It's the national Constitution. If you don't perform, you are not going to retain your position as chairman. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, let me zero in on a few of these nominees. I'll begin with Fudi J. Kone. Mr. Speaker, Fudi J. Kone and me, we entered both schools the same year, the same day, the same class, in 1992. Where is my small voice? Mr. Speaker, that's why I said the president is brave and bold enough to believe in us. I have been a member of parliament for 10 years or more, and I have been a leader for all those four years. That's the trust and confidence that I have. Put it just for them, Mr. Speaker, honorable members. In our class group, when we were in most school, it was F O D I E. Today, he's a very strong man. He's P H O D I E. <laughs> that means with time and with growth, even the name has grown from F O D I E. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members. Me and Fully J. Kode went to the same university. One thing I can say for sure, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Kode is a very intelligent young man. A very intelligent young man. When he we went to university, he did not do procurement. But after university, he was very passionate about procurement. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I can say here yeah, without fear of favor that Mr. Kode, Fully J. Kode, is the most renowned, is the most senior procurement officer in this country. Is the most senior procurement Mr. Kone, you've been elected based on your based on your experience and education, you've been elected to regulate the procurement institution. Mr. Speaker, how do you remember the leakages in Sierra Leone? is done through procurement process. Mr. Speaker, when we do when we do our, our, our oversight, when we do our committees on supplies, when we ask questions, Mr. Speaker, it will interest you to know that the procurement institution is ripping up this country, Mr. Speaker. If you see the amount these institutions put for even ERC It's unbearable, Mr. Speaker. Even ERC can. They inflate prices. They inflate prices. Mr. Fudik J. Kone, you have done the good, you've done the bad, you've done the ugly. So then, you are in a position to regulate. You've seen all of the things that have happened. Of course, You've seen the challenges. You've been part of this problem. Today, you are now in charge. You are in charge to correct the wrongs. So I don't know move forward if we cannot save this country economically. And if we cannot talk to our procurement officers. Mr. Speaker, when you, when you do a committee on supplies and you see the rate at which the Alien and the nation is being ripped up through procurement process, you begin to wonder, those are those doing the procurement job. Are they the Alenians? Are they? Something that is cost 10,000 euros, these people can put 50,000 euros. They can put 50,000 euros. So Mr. Cody, you've seen it all. You've seen it all. Please save this nation. The party that was occupying that city, did his best. <coughs> we knew, Mr. Speaker, the challenges between NPP and the Ministry of Finance, NPP and other authorities. We have gone there. Please help us. The country is starving. The economy is not good. Procurement officers should be cautious. I was happy when you said capacity is a problem. You said 
we are going to strengthen capacity. Because not knowing is even corruption. Because not having the knowledge is corruption. Because bad procurement has been done. So please go there, serve this nation, make His Excellency proud, make this parliament proud, make class of 2022 proud, and make sure we deliver by his Excellency. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the lady going to civil aviation. She's young. I don't envy her at this moment.
will not die. And we still have time. And people will tell us what to say. And children will tell us what to say. So please perform for us. Perform for yourself. Perform for your family. You know the situation. You've been working at the airport. You know the challenges. Please perform. Because every day we charge you, we die. Every day we die together, we die. Every citizen, even government officials, are foolish. So you are wish well. Have the support of this parliament. Whatever you can do to enhance the job, we need this parliament. I can assure you, we will give you the fullest of support. Speaking on behalf of the leadership. Give you the fullest of support because every Sierra is struggling in the When we travel, we meet our friends out of this country, they die. Us who travel, we die. So please, 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 you know people are happy for you. Everybody is here to celebrate you. But after today, we will cry in two, we will grumble in the house, we will do it back we should wait yeah. to spectators of our world, whatever your challenges are, but the committee is possible. You cannot meet the committee to come to the leadership of this house. I will give you the last one to support. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, my younger brother, is now a, a doctor. Doctor Matakoy. Very young and very intelligent. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, personally, I did not have to say. He was able to mesmerize the committee, and we were very impressed. He is top notch, Mr. Speaker. He is on top of his game. He has been in that industry for the longest period. From college to today, he has been part of that industry. You know the challenges, you know the problems. Been a consultant. You are found in that institution. Every Sierra Leone, look at the climate situation. EPA, wetlands, our wetlands are gone. Wetlands are gone. People are backfilling the river. Yes. Go to the slums. People are building up the hills. Our yeah. lands are being are yeah. ravaged in our lands. Yeah. The mining sector, the mining sector. Yeah. The mining sector. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, climate change is the move to do. You've told us, you've done a lot of research around that. You've done a lot of paperwork. Please make sure you save us. Look at the rivers. There was a committee for in this parliament to so look at the rivers. Now when you go to our villages, the rivers are now brown. People are mining illegally. And sometimes they do that in collaboration with your staff. They do it in collaboration. We have a lot of Chinese around, foreigners mining illegally. They have polluted our waters. Today, diseases are all around the community. So you have a lot. You have a lot. You have a lot to do. At this point, I am pleased His Excellency is bringing in young people who have the energy. And he's challenging us. That is the same. As I told the lady, as young as you are, if you fail, you are not dying now. You will be alive and people will tell you you fail. You will live with it. Trust me, if we fail, we are going to live with it. I know you will perform, I know you have the experience, I know you have the zeal, the courage. Even the manner in which he was asking questions, you see the passion in him. Please use that passion. And the committee is there, the parliament is there. Whatever laws you want us to review for, this, for the enhancement of that sector, committees will do. Whatever you want will support you. 
Because this is the period of the young people. Let us not disappoint this excellence. Let us do the things our elders are not able to do. So that when we become elders, we will sit and tell our, our young ones that this is what we do. We change the face and the narrative of service. His excellency has challenged us. Dr. Yahushua, we know you perform. You are very serious. I've known you from university. But you've done a lot of research around. So you know the process. You know if you cannot change now. You are not new. If you don't succeed, that's, that's for you to say. But you must succeed. The parliament will support you. I'm telling you, this parliament, very progressive, very willing to support you. Mr. Speaker, as a son of a military officer, I now zero in on Brigadier Professor Sir. Mr. Speaker, Professor Sir is a very, very, very astute officer. Mr. Speaker, Professor Sir, and my mom used to work. At the 34 military officer. He's a father figure. He has gone, he has soldiered a lot around in the military, in the educational sector. Now you've been brought to your field. Dr. Foley Sir. You've been choosing when we are doing the bill and creating that office, the speaker. I asked the minister who pioneered that bill. That's why do we want to give the position of director general to the president to appoint. He told me in secret that that position we want to reserve it to the most senior doctor in that direction. Today you will be choosing. You know what happened in Ebola? We are not prepared. I think we did not plan Corona came. Now we have a situation, we have an institution like the CDC in America. We should prepare in time. Look at the building. They have been activated. Structures, monies have been spent. Trainings have been done. Make sure we now prepare for any eventuality. Use the office well. And to the man who says to the board, Professor Akima. Mr. Speaker, while I was sitting, sitting and the leader called on Professor Akima, what comes to mind was when we are a minister and when we are getting balls, we should all be in mind, even as members of parliament, that these are our offices, these boards. Tomorrow, when you leave this office, when you leave parliament or you retire as a minister, you will serve these boards. But we have a situation, Mr. Speaker. Ministers look on board members as if they are inferior, forgetting that tomorrow these are their position. Today, you are a board chairman. Wherever you are, the way you will treat the board members, that's the same way you, the minister will treat you. <laughs> if you have not been respecting board members, you don't expect the minister to give you the same respect. If you have treated board members badly, you expect them. But if you have treated them nicely, the minister will treat you nicely. So to the minister, board members in our positions. So when we make laws, I will remind the members of parliament. We have members of parliament who are board members. So treat them well. Today so you are minister, so you can be board member. If you treat them badly, tomorrow when you are board member, if you treat them with respect, when you are board member, you will treat them with respect. Yes. We have board members, we have ministers who have no respect for board members. Yes. Some ministers even deal with director general rather than board members. Yes. Just to make the board very redundant. So this is a learning call. Nobody is too big or too small to learn. When you are a minister, treat people nicely. Because it's a position to so, so. so please, what's my answer? Stay where you treated on us, stay where you treated to me. You are 
Now, which way we hope your minister will walk with you? He will walk with you. This parliament will just go to you. Except you. The way you've been cheated on, the way you always cheat on, somebody will cheat you.
Somos vos.
Even if you take all of the jobs, you have nobody doing them. Even if you do all of the training and positions, you have nobody doing them. Because you use that God. So please, help the young people. It's not just of the Bible, it's not the people that have been put as part of this. So we can go to the ground. Go to our business. Go to the ghetto. Go to the university. Go to the college. Go to the school. The life is Go to the man, go to the man, to the commission. Our culture is gone. I'm happy even your dress shows your attention. Our culture is gone. If you see that you have got it, for the longest time I've never worn clothes. I'll be wearing a picture. That's to show I am a traditional Christian man. For the longest time, I mean, people have realized this has been a normal dress. I've never had it. So please, revive our culture. Our culture is gone. Everything we are now doing is Western. Even our attitude is Western. Even our attitude, our monument, our relics, nothing. We have nothing to show at the union. Able to give gifts now. We don't even have gifts. We have nothing to show. Not on the beach. Stay in life with the place. Go, take your Nothing to show. No help. No nothing. I am happy. I'll be following you on Facebook. You are my friend. Please do your best. You are able to convince us that the coming to Please, you have our support. You want us to review the act? Come, we will review. So if you stick out there, we'll never kill the appointment. You are answerable to us. You are. And if you stick out this appointment, this day, we are paid. If they say we are, we will not allow you to pay. We will not. We are now going, this is the sixth parliament and the final term of the next parliament. This is, this is the period for us to live again. So we are following up on you. We are doing our oversight. Every day, committee of transport. When one should to take up it, call her so you see. We are going to work with you. We are going to follow you. We are going to support you. Because if you say, we will be voted out. If that's the last day, we will not remember if that's the last day. Final time, we have challenged us. There's lots of grumbling in dumb people, lots of grumbling, lots of challenge, everybody's crying. My excellency believes in you. Do you know the pressure his excellency is on that? Please say it. The only way you can say the excellency from the grumbling of our party, from the grumbling of party of party officials, from the grumbling of Sierra Leone, you have to say Ladies, two honorable gentlemen, and one paramount 
But in Sierra Leone, a flight coming to Sierra Leone would have to stop either in Liberia or go through Burkina Faso or Ghana. By the time you get to Ethiopia, from Sierra Leone to Addis Ababa, you would have spent 12 hours. Because you take two and a half hours from Gita to Accra, you would have to spend like another two hours in transit, and you have another seven and a half hours flight to Addis Ababa because Sierra Leoneans don't travel. That is why most of the flights that we are coming to Sierra Leone, they are now scaling. Because when the peace come, you would have five passengers going to go to Nigeria. You would have ten passengers from Sierra Leone. In fact, most of the people that travel in and out of Sierra Leone are not Sierra Leoneans. So as a result, the business of air transport is making money. You know, in the days of Ebola, when Air Côte d'Ivoire was one of the two or three uh, airline or airlines that were traversing the, 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 the globe to come to Sierra Leone, they were making tons of money. At the end of Ebola, when other flights uh, uh, resumed their, their schedule, they shut down because they did not have enough business as they had during the Ebola. So it is incumbent on this house to consider not only the review, but to also ensure that if we are going to improve on our traveling pattern, we must also improve on our local tourism first. You will see those of us coming from the Western area. I challenge you, not too many of us know beyond two districts in this country. Because we don't go anywhere. We stay in a house. And in Sierra Leone, Mr. Speaker, what discourages the, the, the hospitality sector the more, Mr. Speaker, has to that some money. In Sierra Leone, people don't go out and buy food because you think to buy food at any hospitality joint is expensive. So what they will do is you give 30000 to Mami Fatou and they will prepare you food. So she has discouraged hospitality and tourism in Sierra Leone. Mr. Speaker, as I moved away from Chop Money, I would also want to continue in the vein of talking about money and related to the Kush crisis. And I want to address the commissioner designate for the commissioner in waiting for the national youth um, commission. Mr. Speaker, if we are going to work on agriculture, Mr. Speaker, if agriculture is going to succeed, Mr. Speaker, if this alone is going to work, we need enough manpower in the field. And those manpower, those of us that are motorists, those of us that have vehicles, those of us that are affluent, that usually give adults to boys on the street a, a, a path, that give 5,000, 10,000 to our boys, making their certain groups, certain clubs, certain cocoons around Junction Park to collect 5,000 if they are chasing your vehicle now. Those of us that are doing that, we are suffocating the president's idea to fix the idea. Yes, sir. It is like um, an exit audit report. 
they will provide you with all these exceptions and what they have seen, and your response will either increase or decrease your mark. And what we are waiting for is, I'm sure the Sierra Leone Civil Organization Authority has responded, and their response is favorable to, the, to ICAO, and those response we believe will solicit the three or four points that is in variance for us to meet that criteria so that we can be removed from the list of high risk countries. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to end on that and I continue on the issue of handouts. You see, if you go to Lomi, you will see at um, the first junction, the Lomi bus stop, where the church is, you have one group there. If you go towards the bridge, there is another group there. If you come towards Safeco, there is another group there. And in each of these groups, Mr. Speaker, you would have not less than five boys <coughs> chasing after your people. Why are they chasing after your people? For you to give them 5,000, 10,000. And when we are doing that, it is not only happening in Lomri. It happens across the city. If you go to Abadi Road Junction, there is another base there. If you go to Abadi, there is another base there. Mr. Speaker, the only way we can discourage those bases is to ensure that collectively as a nation, we frown at the, poor, at the, at the act of giving free money. So that we encourage our people to go to the field and work. There is no free lunch in finance. Whatever you receive, you pay for it. Yes, I know it is a political stunt, it's a political thing, but let us stop doing politics now and let's help people. Because if you give them free money, you are aiding them to go and buy push. Sure. Mr. if you give them free money, you are aiding them to go and buy push. And if I have 5,000, push is 5,000. With all respect to those that are selling my, my drawdown, they have maintained a stable economy for a very long time, 1,000. <laughs> stable economy, 1,000. Because my constituency has a lot of hopes. I go around, I talk to people. Do I do economic research. And when you do economic research, you go to the basement and find information. Those information make you strong, Mr. Speaker. But however, you see, in the 60s, it's been stable for a very long time. <laughs> 1,000 no, consistently. <laughs> and Mr. Speaker, in his 80s, now it's 1,000,000. Now it's 1,000,000. Mr. Speaker, in the 80s, coming to the 90s, you know, we were made fearful about Kumbejara. But now Kush is 10 times stronger than Kumbejara. So what they are doing now, Mr. Speaker, those that are bringing in Kush, the police, they know them. Like the deputy leader said. They know them, all of us know. Those that are being in English, they know them. It is but good. That was why I like the response given by the commissioner designate that he would not support the act of punishing those that are taking Kush. We should go after those that are being in Kush. Even though Kush is not manufacturer of gold in Sierra Leone, but the concoction that produced the final outcome that is called Kush is brought in by people. People that we know, people that the police connive with, people that the police work with. I know policemen that are also selling Kush. Yes, I know policemen that are also selling Kush. I know that police will take exhibit, Kush exhibit to the police station. And those exhibits they will never display, they will never take to the court, and those exhibits will disappear naturally. What are they doing with them? I know policemen are also taking Kush. We have seen it. But the point is, it is eroding the human capital. Uh, I'm calling on the red, the best you know, member of parliament, and he's making uh, a very serious allegation to the dedicated force of this nation. I'm not a politician, any form of shape, but we need to be a